Hi everyone, it's Nicole and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do some easy stamp layering techniques with brand new stamps and dies from the Altenew March 2022 release. If coloring is not your thing or you're just looking for some quick and easy cards to create or other projects, we're going to create some bookmarks as well. These products are perfect. I, of course, want to do a little dressing up of the background, so I'm going to create some easy stenciling on each of my projects as well. First, I'm taking this large dots stencil from Simon Says Stamp, and I'm taking some white pigment ink and creating a really pretty white polka dot, or really subtle, I guess I should say, white polka dot on this Pebble Hero Arts cardstock. I love this cardstock as it's really nice and neutral, and it's going to be the perfect backdrop for the adorable cat life images we're going to be stamping next. This panel measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. It's A2 sized, meaning it's going to fill the entire front of a standard size card base. I love a white pigment ink for this because it really just gives the perfect uh, white kind of look that I'm going for. That unicorn white pigment ink is one of my very favorite products. Here is the fantastic packaging from Altenew. I just wanted to give you a peek. They always have the most beautiful packaging with ideas as well as guides on how to layer your images. As I mentioned, this is the 6x8 Cat Life stamp set. There is the stamp set and coordinating dies, and this is amazing for all of the cat lovers in your life. I know my oldest son has two cats and that he absolutely loves. I'm actually cat sitting them for him for a little bit. And so this card is going to go to him um, because it's also his 23rd birthday. So um, actually when this video goes up, it is his birthday. So uh, I just thought it would be the perfect card to give him. I am using lots of images from this set and you can see that there are all of the layering pieces. They are all labeled so it does make it super easy to know what to stamp where. I am going to mention as I'm stamping what colors of ink I'm using because I really kind of just picked and choosed from my stash. So that first cat I used Lawn Fawn Soot ink. And funny enough, I think I used all Lawn Fawn inks uh, for my cats. Um, that wasn't really planned, but it worked out great. This is the Pizza Crust ink for the second cat. I will mention you're going to see that I restamped this because I actually messed up the stamping the first time, which happens. Luckily, I was using two different Misties and I left all of my stamps in the Misty to start with, so I was able to easily restamp that. So there's going to be a little bit of a double up here, but I like to kind of keep those things in and let you know how I get around some of those mistakes. So when possible, I will get around it. Now, I actually restamped this whole panel and then restamped these two images since it's all one image that will be die cut together. There was really no way to just restamp one of them. And it's a good thing I kept the second or pardon me, I guess the first panel because I will actually reuse that because I mess up another cat here in a little bit and I'm able to use a cat from that one. So uh, just kind of make sure and hold on to those things until you're all the way done. And then you could even have some extra images. So I am stamping now. Uh, the third color I used is Walnut Ink, which it, I think on screen it's showing really, really dark. It ends up when it lightens that it's a nice brown. So we kind of have a dark gray, a tan, and then a brown. I am stamping the little bow tie as well as the bandana on the cats with a little Pink Fresh Studio Passion Fruit. So this is a a uh, little bit different than the Lawn Fawn inks I'm using. And I like that color. I think it's going to be perfect. Now I'm looking for my next image for this one. So I just need to find the stamp that coordinates with this. And this is going to be the Lawn Fawn number two pencil ink. 
This is a really nice yellow ink, but it's a deep, dark, sunshiny. That's what I call it, yellow, but I think it works really well here. I did stamp everything with my Misty so that I would get really nice coverage and was able to stamp the images more than once as needed. Next, we are going to do probably my favorite image, I think, from this, which is the cat that's like stretching. And we are going to be using the Lawn Fawn Manatee ink. This is the last different ink color. We're going to repeat some of the previous ink colors for the final two cat images. It's a really nice light gray. So we used a darker gray for that first cat and then we used a light gray. And this is where the second mistake came in. So I'm able to switch back to that first panel and we're just going to restamp it. And there we go. And when this lightens, it's going to smooth out a lot. Keep in mind, all of these inks are dye inks, meaning as they dry and are absorbed into the cardstock, it's going to give a very nice, uh, smooth look that will be slightly lighter than the uh, original stamping. I also really like the backwards facing cat. So you get the back of the cat. This one, we are again going to use the Lawn Fawn Walnut ink. And it probably doesn't matter which one I stamp, but I went back to uh, that second panel or the panel that has more of the correct images. And that one spot, I did not get stamped well those first two times, so I stamped it three times. And then finally the cat that's rolled over, wallering around, that sort of reminds me of my son's cat, Apollo. He is so standoffish, but he kind of likes women, I think. Um, and he will always come over when I'm there and flop around and wants me to pet him. And then he'll grab hold of my hand and he wants me to keep petting him, which I always think is funny. And again, we're gonna go back to the Lawn Fawn Pizza Crust ink for this one. Now, there are a few additional images in this stamp set that have layering stamps, and that's gonna be the ball of yarn and the mouse. Now, there is a dragonfly, but that one doesn't have a stamp layering, so we're gonna actually take uh, some Copic markers and add a little color to that. I'm also going to stamp the, uh, pardon me, ball of yarn twice. I know I only showed it once here and I'm going to stamp that with the Pink Fresh Studio Passion Fruit ink both times. I, once I got to the final part of putting my um, backgrounds together, I really felt like I needed that extra one and I already have another ball of yarn on that second panel so we're just going to stamp that layering piece there. For the mouse we're going to use the Lawn Fawn Manatee ink for that nice light gray. And then of course we're going to take the coordinating dies and die cut all of our images. I'm going to take a Copic marker in R20 and add a little pink to the insides of my um, cat's ears as well as a couple of the noses and then we're going to take a warm gray eight marker for the rest of the cat's noses. I felt like they needed just a little something else and so I'm going to add a little additional color here before we finish off the card. So at this point we are almost finished. I am going to pop up all of the cats with foam adhesive and then we're going to stamp a couple of different phrases from the Cat Life stamp set on smooth white cardstock. We'll die cut them with some Simon Says Stamp Sentiment Labels dies, and we'll pop those up right in the center. So I'm using You Are Meow Tastic and hope you have a perfect day. For hope you have a perfect day, I am going to mask off part of that sentiment 
so that I can stamp it with the Pink Fresh Studio Passion Fruit ink. This is a great way to incorporate a little more red ink into the design or a little bit more of the color red into the design. I'm also doing some masking so that I can make this more of a long strip rather than the two lines of text in how it came. You can always kind of alter your greetings as you need. And then like I mentioned, I'm taking this Sentiment Labels die and die cutting my greetings into these little thin sentiment strips. You can also use a paper trimmer to trim them into some thin strips. But you guys probably already know I love my Sentiment Labels dies from Simon Says Stamp. Now that we have all of our components, it is time to put it all together. And as I mentioned, I am gonna pop up all of my cats with foam adhesive. I played around with lots of different placement as far as the cat images. You definitely don't need to use them all. I just kind of wanted to really fill the entire design with cats. And I found that the best placement for me was two rows of cats, one up at the top, one at the bottom with some space in between for my sentiment strips. We're going to place those sentiment strips down first and then we're going to adhere our cats up at the top and the bottom using my favorite scrapbook adhesives, foam adhesive squares. And I want to make sure that they overlap nicely and don't pop up funny. So I'm double checking there. And there is our first row. Let's go ahead and do our bottom row, and then we can add finishing details. That's going to be things like the balls of yarn, the mouse, and some little hearts, as well as the dragonfly. I'm gonna kinda of start here at the center, since this one only has three instead of four. Just wanna make sure I leave enough room, especially for the stretching kitty, because he takes up a lot of room. Then we're going to adhere the little mouse. I think we'll just use a little liquid adhesive to glue him down. The balls of yarn, let's do one between the cat's legs down at the bottom and then we'll also do a ball of yarn up at the top. And then I wanna glue my dragonfly down in place. I haven't added color yet, but we can do that here in a second. And then I'm gonna add, like I said, that second bar, yarn, I can't talk, ball of yarn, and then a few little heart accents. So one on the chest of the kitty that's rolled over, and then we're gonna do a couple right here by the sentiment. Just like so. I love my tweezers for easy placement. And then we're going to take the some blue green markers and add a little bit of color to the dragonfly wings to finish it off. And that is super quick and easy. You could do any color here, but I did pick kind of a really soft blue green color combination. I'm going to feather out from the center with BG75, then a little BG72, and finally finished with a little BG70 out at the very tip. And there is our Cat Life card all finished. Next up, we're gonna create a couple of bookmarks with the Botanical Bookmark Set. I love this layering set. For any book lovers in your life, this is a fantastic stamp set. You can make cards, bookmarks, all of the good things. I am a big reader and so I loved being able to make some bookmarks here. I think they'd make really fun gifts as well. So what I did is stamp the first layer for read on some smooth white cardstock. I am using a combination of Simon Says Stamp Ink in Celery and Limelicious as well as Perfection. That is my first color combination for the first layer. And while I have all the stamps in my Misty, I decided to go ahead and do two of these. 
You could do as many as you wanted, especially if you were maybe going to make a bunch of these bookmarks as gifts. And then I really like the ombre effect of all three of these positively saturated inks for the greenery. Now I want the second layer of greenery to really stand out. So I'm actually going to pick a kind of teal color to use with the positively saturated ink in the color Tropic. Once I have this lined up, I'm again going to stamp each layer for the two backgrounds and you could do this for as many panels or as many of these uh, sentiments, I guess, as you want. Again, as these inks dry and are absorbed into the cardstock, they will mute just a little bit and won't be quite as bright. Finally, we're going to do the final layer for this stamp. So this is a three layer stamp layering stamp, but I am going to do each letter in a different color. It's a little bit quicker if you only want to do one color, but I wanted these to be multicolored flowers with each letter having a different color of ink. First up, we're going to do the R in the color Peony. I'm going to use a little post-it tape just to mask off the rest of the sentiment or the rest of the letters in the sentiment while I ink up the R with the Peony ink. And we're just going to flip these back and forth so we can stamp both of them. We'll clean our stamp. We're going to mask off the R and the A. And then we're going to ink up the E with a little positively saturated ink in pucker. Now I did start with blush and I feel like the blush was just a little bit too light. So I did switch over to the pucker ink instead. And we're going to do that on both before we clean the stamp and then we're going to mask off everything but the A and we will ink up the A with some cantaloupe ink. That's going to give us our orange. Grab some more post-it tape. You'll ink up the letter, remove the post-it tape, stamp your image. I just place the post-it right back in place, ink it up again. For a few of these, I felt like I had to stamp them more than once just to get really good coverage. And we'll do that on the second panel. Finally, we're going to finish the final card with some citrine ink. So that's going to be our yellow. And then for the background of my bookmarks, I really struggled. I tried actually a couple of different things and I settled on using some Lawn Fawn Mermaid cardstock. Aqua is always the answer. I tend to gravitate towards aqua backgrounds. I think they're pretty useful, aqua or gray, for many different kind of designs. And so we're gonna go with that aqua mermaid color for um, our bookmarks here. I think it'll be really pretty and helps the florals stand out. Once I have my two bookmarks die cut using some Lawn Fawn Mermaid cardstock and the Botanical Bookmarks die, I'm going to take this Tiny Dots stencil from Simon Says Stamp and we are going to stencil the bookmarks with white pigment ink. And I'm going to do this for both bookmarks. This tiny stencil gives a very teeny tiny all over dot. I will say I originally tried the bigger dot. You can even see the stencil in the top part of the screen. I think the bigger dot detracts away from the stamped sentiment here or the layering stamped word read. And so I went wanted something much more subtle, much more small. So I love this tiny dot stencil for that. You can see that it definitely works fantastic with this. It adds a little bit of interest to the background, but doesn't overwhelm the design. I'm going to glue the letters down to the bookmark. And then at the top of each bookmark, 
I am going to use a different sentiment from the Botanical Bookmark set. We're going to stamp that with black ink right above the word read on both. Let's go ahead though and stencil that second bookmark really quick with our white pigment ink and glue down the word read. Oh, something I do want to mention, something like a polka dot is perfect for this because the bookmark is slightly longer than six inches, meaning that our stencil isn't going to cover the whole thing, but polka dots are really easy to line back up and stencil the rest of the background or design very, very easily. Another thing to note is I did move the word read down just a little bit from center on the bookmark, leaving a little bit of room right above to stamp that thin sentiment or phrase. On one of the bookmarks, I am going to stamp good things come to those who, those who, and then it will be read. And on the second one, the world belongs to those who read. I'm using Versifying Onyx Black Ink for my phrases. Then we need to finish the bookmarks with some sort of ribbon or tie um, up at the top. I actually have quite a collection. I believe it's called crochet thread. It's really thin thread. I've used it like for tags and things. I have it in a whole rainbow of color. Um, and I've had it for several years. I did pick mine up at Hobby Lobby. I have not looked I would say in like four years, but I would imagine they still have it, but I can't uh, say definitely since I just really haven't gone into Hobby Lobby and looked. But just something that coordinates with your design. For mine, I'm actually going to pick three different colors of the crochet thread and I'm going to cut the lengths twice. That's going to give me six strands per bookmark that I will fold in half, thread through the top, put those ends through the loop, and then we're going to braid the ends to make it secure and to just kind of give it a fun little decoration. So I'm using aqua, um, coral, and yellow. I thought about using all the colors and that I used and I just didn't feel like that worked very well. And I am know I'm a little bit out of frame for this first one, but I catch it when I do the second one. So hopefully we'll see that. I actually just, there we go. I tucked it underneath the edge of my stamp set to hold it down in place. I braided it till I got about an inch and a half from the end and then I knotted it and trimmed off the end to get the ends even. And it just adds a fun little touch. I am not gonna add any dimensional embellishment to my bookmark as they are actually going to be used in a book and I don't want anything lumpy in there like, you know, the little hearts, accents or anything like that. You could definitely add a die cut paper heart if you wanted to or star or anything, basically a flower. But I'm going to keep mine pretty simple. And here is that second one. You can see I'm just braiding that length. You guys, I haven't braided in forever. Kind of funny. And I'm going to knot the end. Snip that off. And there are our bookmarks. Finally, we are going to be stamping a card with the Tree of Fantasy stamp set. This is a beautiful stamp layering tree. And I'm going to start in the center. And we're actually going to stamp this tree three times. I'm not going to use the coordinating die for this card, uh, the tree part, we're going to use the word fantasy, but there is a coordinating die for the tree, which is awesome. And imagine using this for scene building as well. I'm doing kind of a simple design here, but you could combine this with some other stamp images you have for some really amazing scene cards. I am stamping my trees off the edge. You can see I did the center and then I'm going to do one out at each side and I have them all at different heights for added interest. I started with the Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Ink in Aspen. And then we are going to stamp each of the trees with the color Sage. These are some of the newer colors from Simon Says Stamp. So 
So there is our center tree, and then we're going to do each tree on the sides. The tree, so the tree itself has three layers, and the tree trunk has four. And this is the second layer. And I'm not going to worry too much about how it looks a little blotchy because the ink will smooth out. And as I add all those final layers, you're not going to notice that. Now, I was going to stamp the center layer first, and I decided I want that one to be stamped last. Oh, I thought I stamped it last. Maybe I didn't. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I'm going to move over and stamp the one over on the right. And there's my head. I'm so sorry. I was really trying to get it lined up. It's super easy, but for whatever reason, I was having trouble. It's pretty forgiving. There's our third layer. This is the pine color of positively saturated ink. Let's just move, shift our background over. Let's line it up with the left side and stamp that left one. Look how amazing that tree looks, you guys. Isn't that so beautiful? Without tree trunks, it looks a little funny, but I promise it's going to look awesome. And the, finally, our tree in the center. And then we're going to start with our tree trunk which we only need to do on each side since you're not really seeing the rest of the tree trunk on that middle tree. So for this, we're gonna start with the positively saturated ink in Latte. Now this is four layers. You could use four different colors of ink. I'm actually only gonna use three and that final layer I will stamp again just to kind of deepen and darken the final layer. So the first layer is Latte. And it's really light, but I didn't worry too much about that since we have so many layers of tree. And then we have cappuccino. And now it's starting to look like a fun little scene. And then we have mocha. And mocha will be used for both layers three and four. This is a six by eight stamp set. And it does come just like I showed with the Cat Life. It comes with the great little fold out with all of the uh, stamp layering and ideas and all of that good stuff. Now to dress up this background, because this is a pretty simple card, a lot like the Cat Life one, but I always like to add a little something. I am then going to take a rolling clouds stencil from My Favorite Things, and we are going to stencil some clouds in the background. And I like to do this after I have stamped everything so I can really see where I want those clouds to go. I'm going to use some Simon Says Stamp Marine Ink and we're just going to start going in with this Rolling Clouds at Stencil and adding in our beautiful clouds and blue sky. This is going to finish this card so perfectly. It's so easy. And I also want to make sure I do down below where you can kind of see the trees peeking out. It really gives the illusion that these trees are really nice and tall. And I'm going to go in with my ink. I'm not really going to re-ink it, but just add a little extra color. And then let's do down here along the bottom. Just a tiny bit. And then again, just go in with my blending brush and add a little extra color to that sky right around the tops of the trees. And that looks awesome. Imagine doing these in fall colors. You could do a fall themed card. I think that would be really beautiful as well. Next, we're going to put this in our Misty and take some greetings. I'm going to take the phrases, let your greatest and come true. 
and I'm going to line those up with the fantasy die. You could also use the fantasy stamp, but I want to use the die because I actually want to do something with a little bit of dimension. And I'm going to stack four die cut words, one on top of another, and I'm also going to ink them up in rainbow color to really add a punch of color to this design. Once I have my die and stamps laid out where I think I want them to go, I'm going to get them lined up and I'm going to stamp uh, the two phrases with VersaFine Onyx Black ink at the same time, leaving lots of room in between for my die cut word. On one of the die cuts, I am going to ink it up with peony, pucker, cantaloupe, citrine, I think perfection, trop and tropic. Is that right? Yes. And then finally marine. And that's going to create my rainbow for my word. So I'm using a small blending brush and I'm not really rubbing it on so much as pouncing it on. I found that worked a little bit better for the most part. I want it to have a really pretty seamless look where each color just blends right in to the next. I found that because this is a pretty delicate die cut, pouncing it on worked great and then we will stack one right on top of another for four layers. And that's going to give it some nice dimension that we can then adhere right between the two lines of text on the background. Let's add our final color, which is more marine. And there is our die cut greeting. Let's move our scrap paper out of the way and glue these one on top of another. I'm using a fine tip glue applicator. I'm using the Barely glue and gluing them one on top of another and then I'll put an acrylic block on top to help hold them nice and flat and really kind of sandwich them together so they have a great bond. And the addition of that pop of color on this card really makes it. I love all of the bright, happy color here with these trees. And there is our greeting and our acrylic blocks. Finally, I'm going to finish this card with a scattering of heart accents, much like I did for the Cat Life card. So we'll do a couple kind of over here at the end of the letter Y in the word fantasy, and then one directly in the center below come true up at the top of the tree. And we'll place the entire panel on a white side fold card base to finish the design. Then we're gonna take a look at all three projects one more time for the easy stenciling pardon me, the easy stamp layering technique. This is the Tree of Fantasy, Cat Life, and Botanical Bookmarks. The supplies I use to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my Patreon members. If you'd like to become a member of Patreon, please click the link in the description down below. We have an exclusive live for the top tier patrons each month, as well as early access videos, birthday cards to my members and more. So definitely check it out if you're interested. Here is another video featuring all to new products that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to always be notified when I have a new card making video. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.